attorney. Okay, and Nicholas Casal, right? Yeah, let me show you my credentials. Okay, this is the United States Federal District Court, Baker and Hostetler. Okay. You've been served. Go take pictures of him. Go get him. This is the tape number one of the videotape deposition of William Browder in the matter of the United States of America versus Prevazon Holdings Limited et al. We are now going on the record. The time is 9.35 a.m. Will the court reporter please swear the witness in? Please swear the testimony. Please swear the testimony box to be the truth, the whole truth, and put the truth up again. I do. Thank you. Mr. Magnitsky is an attorney. Do you think that's accurate? He was my attorney. He was your attorney? Yeah. Acting as? Acting uh, in, in court, uh, representing me. I see. And he had a law degree in Russia? Um, I'm not aware of it. He did. I see. And, and he had, um, uh, he went to law school? No. He didn't go to law school. He didn't have a law degree, but he was your lawyer. And he represented me in court. I see. I should say represented Hermitage Fund companies in court. Okay. You gave this information and similar information to law enforcement authorities in Switzerland, in Latvia, in Russia, in other locations, and you didn't check to see whether you had obtained the information legally. No. Is that your testimony? No. Was that a yes? I didn't hear you. Uh, Objection to form the question. So could you ask the question again? You didn't check whether it was legal, correct? I didn't check if it was legal. All right, let's go to um, page 111, same exhibit. <coughs> what is this document? I don't know. You have no idea? No. You gave it to the U.S. Attorney? Yes. Did you explain it to the U.S. Attorney? No. What did you tell the U.S. Attorney about this document? Nothing. Just delivered the letter and told them nothing? Correct. And you have no idea who created this document? No. Now these documents that follow, this document the ones that follow, supposedly trace money from the Russian Treasury into various accounts. You know that, right? Yep. You don't know how the tracing was done? No. And how did Mr. Kleiner and your team get what purports to be, or what has been represented to us to be, bank information on, for instance, page 111 of Exhibit 1? I don't know. And you have no idea whether it's legal or not? I have no idea. Do you know whether this document was created by a bank? I don't know. Was it created by somebody on your team? I don't know. Do you know what information it was based upon? I don't know. Do you know whether they had uh, account statements? I don't know. Do you know whether they knew the daily balance in those accounts that are represented here? I don't know. Why do you use a pseudonym for Mr. Sashua in, uh, in your book? I used pseudonyms for a lot of people. Why did you use a pseudonym for him? I don't recall. And the company ultimately is bankrupt without paying the taxes. That's what happened, isn't it? I don't know. So at the time that the search warrant was executed in June of 2007, the situation was that courts had found that you had taken advantage of the tax regime in Kalmykia. You had taxes due. They were unpaid. The company was bankrupt. You say that's not a grounds to conduct an investigation? 
projection. So you're, you're uh, break it down into smaller pieces because I don't, I don't know what you're, you're trying to say here. The Ministry of Interior was investigating Hermitage for tax fraud from 2004 and finally searched its offices with a search warrant in 2007, correct? No. What happened? Uh, the Interior Ministry was um, investigating Hermitage in 2004, closed the case in 2005. Who told you that? Um, I got information uh, in 2000, some recent year. From whom? I can't remember where I came from. So just this amorphous information that it was closed? Yes. But you don't know whether it's true or not, it's just what somebody told you? No, no, I'm pretty sure it's true. Was it a person in a position to know? I can't remember. So we have this anonymous person who says the investigation was closed, but then there's a search warrant in 2007, and that we know. So we know that there was an investigation in 2004 and 2005, and a search warrant in 2000, uh, search warrant executed in 2007, and then we have this amorphous, but I was told it was closed. That's all we know right now. Is that right? Objection to form. No. What more do we know? We know that it was closed in 2005 from this source, unidentified source, says it was closed in 2005. Yeah. No documents. There might be. But you don't have any. I don't remember. OK. Is Mr. Um, Sashua, who bought um, Daphne Step? Yeah. No, when his firm did, I think. All right. Maybe well, him. Could you speak up a little? I don't know exactly who bought it. I think it was him or his firm. All right. And uh, when did you first meet him? Um, 1998. And um, did you do business with him in any other ways? Uh, he provided uh, security for Republic National Bank, who was the business partner of my uh, investment advisory firm. Mr. Saffers. So that. You met him through Mr. Saffer? Correct. Edmund Saffer? Correct. OK. Now, when were you denied entry into Russia? November 13th, 2005. What's that? Yes. Yes. All right, and when were you convicted? Sometime in July. 2013. William Felix Browder found guilty of committed two crimes, and then it goes on, right? Correct. And there's nothing about Mr. Magnitsky being convicted of anything, correct? I'm not a Russian criminal lawyer, so I couldn't um, make a judgment about this, um, about this conviction. Well, it appears from these two entries that you were wrong, that he was never convicted posthumously, right? No. You're, just, you're sticking to your position even though the document says otherwise? Yeah. Because you're not a Russian lawyer? That's correct. All right. But you have Russian lawyers working for you, right? I do. And they've reviewed this conviction and they've said there's somewhere, someplace in this conviction that it refers to Mr. Magnitsky as being convicted of something. Objection. Uh, I think communications with his lawyers are um, topics that we All should right. not answer. So do you have any basis for saying that Mr. Magnitsky is um, convicted of anything? Yeah. What's that? Advice from my lawyers. OK. I'm sorry. You know, he just claimed privilege for you. Um, I'm reading the document. It says the case is dismissed. The individual decision to dismiss the crime case on the basis of paragraph 4, article 24. You see that? So that's at the beginning. And at the end, sentenced, only Felix, William Felix Browder. You're sticking by your position no matter what, right? That's your My analysis is different than yours. Um, you have anything in the document 
that uh, you can point me to that suggests he's convicted? I'm not a lawyer. Well, you read English, right? I do read English, but I am not a specialist on Russian law and Russian pr criminal procedure. So based upon what you've read here, you might question what your lawyers told you then? Without a full analysis, I wouldn't be able to make a judgment on this document. I see. But you would agree this is the conviction. This is your conviction. Apparently so. Right. When you told people Mr. Magnitsky's a lawyer, did you also tell him he never went to law school and um, uh, never had a law license? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm did, when you tell, how many times have you said Mr. Magnitsky's a lawyer? I don't know. 50, 100, 200? I, I don't know. Many, many times, right? Yep. Have you ever told anybody that he didn't go to law school and didn't have a law degree? No.